Oh, goody. All right, what's going on, everybody? Zombies here again, and today we're back with another Marvel Snap video. So in this one, I wanted to do a deck overview for probably my favorite deck in the game right now, and the deck that took down the Infinity Conquest for me earlier this week. This is the Wave version of the very popular Tempo Move list that's been going around. I've liked this list for a while, though I have made some subtle changes to it recently, and I'm pretty happy with the version we've landed on here. Now, when I did go through the Infinity Conquest, ended up doing that pre-OTA, so Captain Marvel was a 4-5, but I also played the deck after the nerf, and even though initially I thought we might no longer want to be running Captain Marvel, she still proved to be a pretty valuable addition in this deck. I decided to include some gameplay in the last deck overview. Everyone seemed to like that a lot, so we're going to be doing the same here. But we're going to run through the deck, talk about some card choices and what the general game plan is here. And then later on today, I'm going to be uploading a separate video with our final match in the Infinity Conquest. So getting right into it, card choices. How has this deck changed over time? Well, the big change we've ended up making is including Nightcrawler. And Nightcrawler has honestly been amazing. Initially, I was running Spider-Ham in this list. However, it felt like Ham wasn't always making the impact that I needed him to, and one of the things that this deck really lacked was another one drop that we could weave into our wave turn on turn 5 to pair with Miles when he is cost reduced. Initially, we only had Nebula for that, and Nebula really isn't that great on the later turns of the game, so adding Nightcrawler not only as another way to potentially trigger or Miles or Craven, or give us some added flexibility in where we're moving cards around at the end of the game, but just being able to play another cheap thing on our wave turn has been absolutely incredible. We run the pretty standard package of tempo move cards here. That includes Craven, Jeff, Silk, and Spider-Man, as well as Miles for a bit of payoff. The top end of the deck here, though, is where things get a little bit different. Due to wave limiting our opponent to only one card on the final turn, Arrow has been an absolute all-star in this deck. We're able to get ahead in two out of the three lanes, get our wave down on turn five. We can often just arrow into the middle and prevent the opponent from getting power across the board. This has changed a little bit with the Doctor Doom on nerf as more people are playing that card now. And honestly, I'm working on another version of this list with Doom. You could consider him in the Magneto spot, but I think Magneto has some really valuable utility right now, especially because a lot of people are trying out different versions of Darkhawk after the recent Rock Slide change. Nebula is our all-star one drop here alongside Nightcrawler. She's really, really good at just being able to kind of force your opponent to respect her. Otherwise, she gets out of control really quickly. And now that we're running two one drops, I think armor makes a lot of sense as we really value them being able to be protected and not killmongered. Also, sometimes our Craven gets really big and we do have a card that's a bit vulnerable to Shang-Chi and Magneto. But I think armor just gets some general utility value here. It's good versus some annoying locations and it gives you a leg up if you happen to run into a destroy deck. Captain Marvel's a card I initially thought about cutting due to the nerf from 5 power to 4 power. However, she still serves a really valuable role in this deck. And that role is basically helping offset bad silk RNG. Sometimes the outcome of the game can be dramatically altered due to where silk decides to go, whether that's because of buffing Craven or missing out on his buff, or just if we need that extra 5 power in another lane. I found that Captain Marvel serves a very valuable role here, and that if Silk doesn't go where we necessarily want it, sometimes Captain Marvel can swing in and flip and otherwise lose in game. Wave is definitely the backbone of this deck though, just being able to play her on 5 and close out with a big threat is super duper impactful. Wave gives us a pretty big edge in the mirror, as a lot of the other regular tempo move decks are playing Kitty Pride, and on the final turn, they probably won't want to be playing their kitty as their only one card per turn. So they kind of miss out on all the energy they spent investing into her, especially if they didn't happen to get Angela down. Craven gets absolutely out of hand with all the different move cards we have in this deck, just pumping him up throughout the game. And the newly reworked Spider-Man is also definitely a big part of why Craven has been so incredibly powerful in this style of deck. One of the reasons I think this deck has the potential to be the best wave deck out of all of the wave decks right now is the fact that the move element to the deck kind of makes it really hard for the opponent to guess where we're going to be playing for in terms of the two lanes we're trying to win by the end of the game. So if they don't really respect all three lanes, we can kind of fight for each lane. As long as we're winning the lane by a little bit, it's usually enough to close out the game with wave on the final turn as long as we drew one of our big threats in arrow or magneto 
and even sometimes we can squeak out a win without them, though it's definitely a lot trickier if we don't happen to draw them. Silk is probably the most impactful card for enabling this, as it's really hard for the opponent to reliably predict where Silk is going to be going by the end of the turn. It's also really important to pay attention who has priority in this deck, as that will often influence how your Silk moves. If your opponent moves it first, then maybe you don't want to try and move it first yourself if you're expecting them to play in the lane that turn. Uh, this is probably, I think, the thing that's hardest to get down about the deck. But it's also really rewarding when you figure out how the opponent is going to try and play into your deck and try and play one step ahead of them. And movement overall is just so much stronger on the final turn of the game when the opponent is only limited to one card because it becomes very, very hard for them to predict not only the Silk movement, but also things like Nightcrawler and Jeff or our Arrow and Magneto moving their own things around. One of the reasons wave decks previously fell out of the metagame is the fact that decks weren't really as good as keeping up fighting for two or three lanes at a time while also being able to play wave on five as that was usually a pretty big tempo loss that would put them behind. But this deck gets enough stats and spreads it around the board effectively enough where it's pretty often that we're going into the final turn ahead. In terms of matchup, I found this deck has been pretty competitive versus the vast majority of popular decks going around right now. I think the hardest matchup for this one, though, is the Brood deck, Brood Patriot. Uh, if they do get the Forge into Brood into Absorbing Man, it can be pretty brutal to beat them. However, if you are careful about managing your snaps and retreats versus that deck, you definitely have a very valid chance at beating them if they aren't getting the perfect draw every round. I found this deck to generally be favored in the move mirror because of wave and limiting what the opponent can do on the final turn. Do be mindful of opposing legions though, as even though he's now been nerfed to a 5-7, with certain locations he can definitely scam you out of the game on the final turn, so do want to be aware about that when you go against that matchup. But yeah, overall, I think this deck is super well-rounded. It's super fun to play, especially if you're like me and really enjoyed playing Arrow in the past, but haven't played her in a while since she just hasn't been that great of a card in the meta. Now is definitely her time to shine again, and this is by far my favorite deck to make use of. I've also had quite a few people tag me over on Twitter that they use this deck to get their infinite avatar as well, so it's been really nice seeing a lot of other people have success with this deck too. As previously mentioned, I'll be putting up my final round in the Infinity Conquest that I played out earlier this week on stream, as I think it was some really good games. It was kind of intense, honestly. Really wanted to win that series, and it was a lot of back and forth. So if you want to see more of the deck in action, as well as some live commentary, definitely keep an eye out later today when that goes live on the channel. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Let me know what you think of the deck in the comments below. And if you enjoyed it, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.